One of your assignments in your IVYT class is to create a time management log. In the past, we've always used Excel to create this time management log for your first week of classes, not including this week. It was to write down study times, work schedules, maybe other obligations you might have. Be sure to include time for yourself, for your family. And you had a rubric for what you were to follow using Excel to create this time management log. Realizing not everybody might have access to Excel or have the components at home to be able to do, even though Excel is free of charge from the My IV page. If you wanted to download Excel at home to do this assignment, you could go to your student tab under student resources and find the software link under other resources. In that software link, you'll find the free download to Microsoft Office 365. Included in that free download as a student, you get Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, which are all very useful tools for your college path. I would definitely recommend you downloading this to your home device to do this assignment if possible. If, however, you don't have a PC that is able to download this software, possibly you're using a Chromebook or a tablet, which only allows for Google devices, your other option is to use the Google Drive. Google Drive has Google Docs, Google Sheets, and other useful things that are just like the Microsoft products. If you go and click on a new Google Sheets, this is very, very similar to the Excel that you would have used if you used the Microsoft free download. So this video is going to go through how to do this assignment using Google Sheets instead of Excel. The first thing that the assignment asks you for is to create a strongly uh, maintained, well-defined segments of time. So possibly in this column over here on the left side, I'd want to put segments of time that are equally spaced apart. And in the second column, uh, column B, I will put uh, the descriptions of what I will be doing in each of those time frames. So you, you want those segments of time to be consistently spaced apart. So if you do an hour here, then the next one has to be an hour apart as well. You don't want to go 10 minutes and then 30 minutes and then maybe 60 minutes for the next one. You want them all to be the same distance apart. And you want them to be well defined. So for example, the start of the day, I'll start it at midnight because that's really the start of a particular Tuesday, let's say. So I'm going to put the time frames over here, which is um, actually, let me label it first. Let's put uh, time of day. And then the first one I'm going to put is, which would be midnight, and I'm going to go in 30 minute increments. So the next one, if it's got to be 30 minute increments, I want to be consistent. It's going to go to 1 a.m. in the morning. So of course I'm going to do this all the way down until I get to the end of the day, which would be midnight. So I'm going to let you pause this video here and create this first column on your own. Now that you've had all a uh, time to put all of the time frames into your column, of course you can specify different units of time other than half hour increments. That's just what I chose. If you want to do it in 15 minute increments, you may. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the activity that I'll be performing in each of those activities or time frames. So of course for me, I'll be sleeping. I usually wake up at 6 a.m. I'm going to put sleep in each of the categories up until 6 a.m. At 6 a.m., that's when I wake up. And when I wake up, I tend it takes me an hour to get ready for the day. That includes my shower and uh, just getting myself put together for the day. After that, I will eat and then I drive. At 
8 a.m. when I'm driving to school. I am in class. For three hours. Again, this is just me just as an example. Of course, you would put what you're doing in those time frames for your time log activity. I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of this column on my own per what I do for my activities. So I suggest you pause the video and fill out your own for yours. You filled in all of your activities for every single time segment in your time management log. The other part of the assignment is not only to have these consistent, well-defined segments, but also to make sure that your log is aesthetically pleasing. So I would suggest that you use lots of color, different fonts, borders, labeling to make this ideally very pleasing to the eye and to the reader. Another thing you might want to consider is based on your um, assignment, you might have to do this for multiple days of the week. See, we only did this for one day. Maybe this was the Monday. But possibly you could do activities for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and even through the weekend. So if your activity calls for you to do a whole week's worth of time management log, you can do that over the course of seven days and just fill in all of the activities. Of course, every day might be similar. Some days might be different. So for example, if Tuesday, you do the exact same things on Tuesday as you do on Mondays, one thing you could do is you can just highlight and do a copy and a paste because Tuesday's activities are identical to Monday's. Of course, if Tuesdays have slight differences, then you can just change the few things that might be different. But of course, you're going to want to do that for all of the days of the week. Once you have that for all days of the week, we're going to work on making this uh, a little prettier to the eye. So we're going to work on some of the formatting options that we have over here in the top. So I'm going to uh, highlight the labels up here at the top. Let's say uh, this is Monday and this is Tuesday. Of course, I put in the rest of the days of the week, but I'll let you do that. Then I'm going to highlight and I'm, I want the labels to stand out so I can make them bold. I could even make them a little bit bigger in size if I chose to. Sometimes when that happens, if something is too big for the cell, you lose some of the letters. A way to fix that is just to go up to the column header and you can move the column as big as you'd like it to fit the rest of the data. Again, you just put your cursor at the top until you get the double-sided arrow and then you drag that column to as wide or as narrow as you want it to be. All right, uh, I'm also going to throw in some highlighting. Uh, there's a little paint can here and I'm going to fill those boxes in with a color of my choice. I like blue and that makes that headers really stand out then. Other things I can do is I can create borders. If you were to print this, these lines would not show up, just the words. If you want the lines to actually show up on a paper or maybe just make these lines darker, you can use the little border boxes here. I'm going to put borders around all everything underneath my labels. So I'm going to put this border and you have choices here. I'm just going to do the regular border of inside all of those lines and that gives you a little bit more depth to your table. So I would play around with some of those. Those are the, those are the basic ones there that you can use, but obviously I'll play around with some other color. Uh, maybe each day of the week has a different color. So for example, you can on Monday, you can make all of these words. You can change the color of the letters. So maybe Monday's words are purple. And then Tuesday's um, data can be a different color. Uh, let's make it red. Just an idea. You play around with that and make it your own. Uh, you can also shade in the rest of these if you wish. Um, different things you could do. Something else you could do is you can summarize all this data in what we would call um, some, something of a statistical summary. One way to do that is to highlight your data. So let's say, let's say I just select all of Monday's activities. Okay, so right now all I did was select everything in Monday's column. I can insert a chart 
And when I insert a chart, there are options for your chart. The first one that pops up is a column graph, which gives you a breakdown of what your activities are for that day. You can see that sleep takes up the biggest portion of my day, and then after that would be work, school, and then Xbox. Okay, you can change how you stack those uh, if you want to. Um, that just makes them all the same height. Clearly, that doesn't make much sense. I would leave it on standard or none. Um, and then you can change what your labels are down here at the bottom. Other charts you can do, uh, you can, another one you can do is you can insert, let's try this time, let's do a pie graph. So the pie graph you'll see has different options. So down here at the bottom, you'll see all different types of graphs you can do. The pie graph is a very useful one. And that shows you what percent of the day you're doing each of those activities. So obviously, as we just said in the bar, in the bar chart, the sleep piece of the graph, that percentage, is 27%, or in other words, 27% of your time of your day is spent sleeping, at least on a Monday. And this is a good way to look at the whole day. And in deciding on whether you're spending the time where it's most useful. Obviously, we want to be um, productive, but we also want to allow time for our well-being. So things like exercise and Xbox and things that in family time, the things that make us feel good are the pieces of the puzzle that are important. But are we spending our time wisely? In other words, is if you're studying and your schoolwork isn't exactly where you'd want it to be, maybe your grades are suffering, maybe one of these other pieces of the pie you can um, shrink down to give more time to that. So I would encourage you to create this pie chart or the bar graph. Uh, it's just a way of looking to see if you're spending your time where you want it to be. And maybe you didn't realize you were spending a lot of time in one particular sector and you might want to make some adjustments. Once you have your time management log done and complete and you're ready to submit it, the nice thing about Google Sheets is it automatically saves it. You don't have to save it as you would in a Word or Excel document, which is um, something that is quite the advantage. So you don't really usually lose your data. It's always continually saved. So once you're finished, it's automatically saved. And you'll notice if you go back to your drive, you'll notice that it's automatically here in my time management log in my files. So when I go back to my assignment, my time management log in my assignment, you'll notice uh, when you go to submit your assignment, you'll have the option to download it from your Google Drive. So if I click on my Google Drive, it's not going to let me because um, I am an instructor. I don't actually have a student account, but you would navigate towards your Google Sheets within your Google Drive. And of course, it's in your Google Drive because uh, it automatically saves there. So you can just navigate towards it uh, and it'll point it towards it and save it right here. Now, if your assignment says that it has to be an Excel file, and remember, we did this in Google Sheets. We did not do this in Excel. There is a backdoor way of saving this as an Excel file instead. So you're gonna download under the File tab, you're gonna download this as an Excel file. And when I download it as an Excel file, it automatically saves it here. So if you download it, you can um, open it if you're allowed to open it, if you have Excel, otherwise you can just save it to your computer, okay? So if I save it as a download, as an Excel file, I can then save it as um, a file on my computer, no matter somewhere where I know where it will be. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save this as, um, let's put this on my desktop, and I'm just gonna call it time management log.
Okay, so if, it, if your assignment said it specifically had to be an Excel assignment um, in your time management log, then you can file upload and go to where you just saved that time management log. So I would go back to my desktop and upload the time management log, which is now in Excel. And I have now uploaded an Excel file, even though I created it in Google Drive. And then you would submit your assignment there. So you tab two different options. Google Drive and Google Sheets is a perfectly good way of doing it. But there are sometimes some instances where it requires you to have an Excel file. So all you, again, need to do is just make sure that you download that and make sure that you save it as an Excel file instead before you save it and submit it for your assignment.